The year is now 1990. Super Mario Bros. 3 is selling like hotcakes, just like its predecessors. I would say that the game also led to third-party companies profiting the shit out of the game, but all I could really find in terms of merchandise at the time was Happy Meal toys. And the watch. There's still a cartoon about the game made by the fellow dicks at dicks, so... The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3 was first aired on September 8th of 1990, and lasted until December 1st of the same year. I wasn't very fond of the series as much as Super Show, mostly because I've only seen two episodes from the Mario Bros. Mix DVD. The same DVD that I lost because taking care of DVDs was a very foreign concept to me. The intro of the show is not a rap song this time, instead it's a narration that explains the premise of the show. It is a legend no one will forget. Everyone thought King Koopa had left the Mushroom Kingdom, and then his doom ship attacked. King Koopa was back with the greatest danger ever known, his Koopa Kings. Although it's not as memorable as Super Show's intro, I think it did its job well enough as an opening. It not only tells the audience what the show will be about, but it also shows it with new power-ups and characters that will be introduced in the show. And the music and narration gives the opening an epic feel to it. Sure you would. Now onto the show itself. Instead of having a mix between a live action and cartoon segment, the show changed the formula to just be a cartoon, with two 11 minute episodes in a 23 minute time frame. So that meant no more live action Mario and Luigi shenanigans. The premise of the show is that King Koopa is trying to take over the Mushroom Kingdom, again, with the help of the newly introduced Koopalings, and it's up to Mario and the others to stop them. One big change that this show made from Super Show is that it actually takes elements of the game they're basing it out of. So now it feels like the characters actually belong in this setting, instead of just slapping them into some pop culture or historical setting out of nowhere and go from there. It actually makes the cartoon more faithful to the game instead of making it seem like a lazy cash grab. The episode plots are also more creative, showing what King Koopa and the Koopalings are capable of. Speaking of the Koopalings, this is their first time they appear in a Mario cartoon, and each Koopaling also has a unique personality, which I think is a neat idea. Cootie Pie is the brat, Big Mouth is the loud mouth, Bully is the tough guy, Cookie is the brains, Cheatsy is the cynical one, and Hip and Hop are partners in crime. All these traits make them stand out from each other, since all of them were simply just boss fights at the time of the show's release. There's also episodes where the characters set foot in the real world, which I oddly like, because the creators of the show put their own twist with the world the characters live in by separating between the real world and the Mushroom Kingdom. They even include a little moral at the end of some episodes, with lessons such as don't spread rumors, cherish your siblings, and don't be a fucking racist. You can't have a Mario cartoon without some songs, and this show definitely has some, which are included in all of the episodes. But this time, the songs are original compositions instead of covers of famous songs. I say yes, you say no. Oh, I like rain, you like snow. Sweat-handed, sweat-handed, underhanded in Japan. The songs are alright, they mostly serve to fill the runtime since it's basically just a montage song. The humor in the show is also improved from Super Show, branching to other jokes than just stereotypical Italian food jokes. Well, I wanna listen to music! This record's hot! Hey, now it's even hotter! Holy shit, Luigi. The pacing is also less awkward this time, which makes each episode flow pretty smoothly. Except for the endings, it still feel a little bit rushed. Welcome home, princess! Welcome home! Are you gonna say something? The only thing I can't praise this show on is the animation. It's still bad. The animation looks the same for the most part, and there's still animation and continuity errors up the wazoo. Like, how can he still fuck up this bad? Okay, that's all I have to say about the show overall. Let's talk about an episode. The episode I want to talk about today is episode 26, The Ugly Mermaid. The episode begins with Mario and the gang in their frog suits, chasing down Koopa in the submarine. I'm sorry, Doom Sub. The Koopalings warn about their approach, so Koopa decides to attack with rocky wrenches and... Lasers? Hey, Koopa! We're taking you down! Mario notices that Toastal is about to get shot by one of the lasers, so he takes the shot, which causes his frog suit to turn into cement, causing Mario to sink to the bottom of the ocean. 
I can't breathe. I, I can't sw swim. I can't breathe. I, I can't hang on. Save me. Holy mackerel. Guys, I, I think Mario's dead. The name's Holly Mackerel, not Holy Mackerel. The episode name makes sense now. Damn it. I also forgot to mention how bizarre the episodes can be. There's an episode where Cootie Pie wants to take over the United States. An episode where Koopa and the Koopalings throw trash in a real world that turns humans into Koopas. And then there's this. I think they got a bit too far with that to say the least. Anyways, Mario is saved by this ugly ass mermaid named Holly Mackerel. And takes him to the underwater city known as... Metropolis. I'm the mermaid princess of Metropolis! That's a pretty lame name for an underwater city. So once they arrive in the underwater city, Luigi and the others decide to break the cement off Mario and give it some breeding tips. Out with the bad air! In with the good! Out with the bad air! In with the good! Get Mario wakes up to Holly Mackerel, who thinks Mario is some sort of frog prince. My royal fortune teller told me a handsome frog prince would be hopping into my life. And here you are. And decides to leave her because who wants to be with that ugly piece of shit? It turns out Mario and the rest can't leave Metropolis because now Mario has developed PTSD for swimming in the water after quite literally a near-death experience. Not only that, King Koopa is here and turns to destroy Metropolis. King Metropolis! People of Metropolis! You have 20 minutes to surrender, or I will destroy your city! All these issues create a pretty interesting internal conflict for Mario. Does he choose to face his fears and jump in the water to stop Koopa's invasion? Or does he choose to stay in Metropolis and get chased down by a mermaid girl who wants to marry him? The stakes are pretty high here, even if all of this sounds silly as all hell. So Mario and the gang stopped Koopa's first wave of his invasion. Wave? Did he say wave? And Toadstool decided to have Mario stay in Metropolis while she, Toad, and Luigi fight off Koopa in the water. Once Mario's alone and rethinks his life for a bit, he's been caught by Holly. God damn it! Hey King, are you gonna... Are you gonna do something about it? I mean, you know who the Mario Bros are. Sizzling sea serpents, princess! Oh, am I glad to see you in the Mario Brothers! So why can't you just... Uh, never mind. So as Mario is getting forced into marriage, Luigi, Toadstool, and Toad are caught by Koopa's nets, leaving them in big trouble and giving Koopa the advantage. That advantage being breaking the glass holding the city which will cause the mermaids to drown. What the fuck, Koopa? And now Mario is ready to face his fears and jumps in the water, which is pretty cool to see. Brave men die a single death. Cowards marry fish head mermaids. You got that right. So Mario saves Luigi, Toad, and Toadstool, and all of them stop King Koopa once again. Mario has been rewarded with a medal for saving Metropolis, even though it should have been given to everyone in the frog suit, but whatever. And Holly comes in giving Mario a wedding day fishbowl, only to discover... Ah! I can't marry him, Daddy! He's, he's, he's the ugliest looking frog I've ever seen! I still don't know why the king hasn't made it clear to his daughter that he's just Mario, but again, whatever. The episode ends with Mario and the gang swimming back to the surface. And that was The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3. What do I think of the show? It's pretty good. Sure, the animation is still bad, sure the episodes get really weird at times, but other than that, it's a pretty enjoyable show. The show is actually faithful to the original game, the plots are more original and creative, the jokes are much funnier, the characters are written better and are cooler in some cases, and it's overall a better cartoon. Well, I'm pleasantly surprised at how good the cartoon is, seeing as how I watch all the episodes for this video. So let's see if the next Mario cartoon is any better. Oh.